Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall never, never prevail. Amen. Good morning, good morning to everyone in Cyberland. Welcome to Upon This Rock Ministry, coming to you from the Church of God of Chesapeake, Virginia. Amen. What a glorious morning. Amen. Monday morning, the start of a work week here in Chesapeake. It's cold, it's wet, it's raining. But I tell you what, that's on the outside because I'm sure feeling good in my soul this morning because it's a blessing to get up out of bed and put your feet on the floor amen and begin your day with God and I thank God for that so we're going to just get right in we got an interesting subject today and we're looking that God will bless all of us so let's jump right in with songs of devotion amen
Amen. Still have a song, though the enemy rages. Amen. Thank God we still can have a song. No matter how he come against us, in the midst of that test, in the midst of that trial, there is victory. Again, we just thank God for being here. We ready. We don't know what all this week is going to bring, but amen. We know with God, we can make it. Um, at this time, I want to read a devotional text. If you turn with me to the first epistle of Peter, the second chapter, let's read the ninth and the tenth verse. First Peter 2 and 9 and verse 10. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God which had not attained mercy, but now, amen, have attained mercy. Amen. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from freshly, from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak evil against you, as evil doers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. We thank God for his word. Amen. We want to check out the hotline quickly. Amen. I'm calling it hotline. I mean the chat line. <laughs> um, and just see, uh, uh, do we have any prayer requests out here? You know, when we assemble here, the purpose is for devotion prayer, and Bible study. Amen. We want to, Brother Marshall got a request. We want to continue to remember Jordan's test lab results. Brother Lloyd, amen. He want us to remember Brother Pitts and his family. Remember Brother Pitts and his body and the, Web, and the Weber family as well. Amen. Continue, amen, to remember Sister uh, Regina regarding business matters, amen, and her children, amen. Uh, there's a lot to pray for, and just like the song said, amen, we still got a song, amen, despite our situation, amen, weeping may endure for a night, but guess what? Joy comes in the morning. God sends us a song in the middle of the night. So let us pray. Continue to remember the family of Sister Sandra Allen, that God will comfort their hearts, their congregation down there in Bessemer, Alabama. Remember them to lose an elder. Amen. That, that's, that's really something. Amen. And here it is. We in Chicago who came up with Sister Sandra, we knew her well too, amen. We remember when she started her ministry, amen. Thank God for, and we ask that you all just continue to remember the family. Let us pray, amen. Heavenly, kind, and gracious Father, we thank you this morning for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy, oh God. We realize how insufficient we are of ourselves we don't know how to pray as we all oh god but we look to you that you will direct us jesus said when you pray for he assumed that we would lord and truly we're praying this morning oh god we're calling amen amen on the lord this morning amen the bible says that when we seek you with our whole hearts we shall find you lord we seek thy face Hear our prayer, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Realizing the prayer of the righteous availeth much. Bless us, Lord, in a great way. We 
Amen. Just lay these petitions out before you. Some for one thing, some for another. Amen. Whether it be financial needs, physical needs, emotional needs. Oh God, Lord, we give it to thee. We cast our cares upon you. Because Lord, I believe you cares for us. Amen. You say draw nigh to God. And he'll draw nigh to you. Lord, amen. We're drawing nigh. We're looking to thee, unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, who started us off on this journey, and it's only him who can take us to the end, Lord God. So, Lord, we pray that you would bless us, Lord God. So, we are praying with all prayer in the Spirit this morning, Lord God, that you would bless and have your way. Remember thy people these requests. Amen. As we call them out, as we utter them before you, Lord God, and even those that might come in after we pray, we pray that you would honor them. We do ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God for prayer. Amen. Thank God for this time. Thank God for coming here and sharing, amen, in this vehicle of getting out the word of God. You know, God got many vehicles. Some people preach from the pool step, pit. Some people, amen, stand on the corner. Some people go door to door, amen. Amen, we choose to do this, amen, through social networking, through the internet, amen. It's, it's many ways we can get this word out. We, amen, when we come before God, we, we, don't, we, we can't have an excuse. Amen. If just by telephone, amen, we can do it. Sharing, amen, when we go to the grocery store, in our schools, on our jobs, amen, sharing the word of God. So we desire God to have his way. Saints, I love you. I thank you for your support. Amen. I thank you. Amen. You know, I was just thinking. We are on our 164th broadcast since we started this um, um, this journey, amen, and coming in and just having, you know, I don't like saying show, you know, as if we just like, we're not a TV show, amen. We're not even really a radio broadcast. Amen. I believe it's even greater than a radio and a TV broadcast. Amen. Because we are able to go out and we can be personal. Amen. We can share God in a personal way. Amen. Uh, something that we're going to be doing, and that is we're going to be using another tool called Skype. Whereas you, amen, can Skype us or we Skype you, bring you into this format. You can give your testimony, amen. You can, uh, you know, share in in your share with us your victories, amen. Not only that for uh, a talking format or debate, amen. Bible study, as many things we can do with that. So just pray as we get ready to take this broadcast to a different level, amen. So let us continue in songs of praise. We want God to continue to have his way among us so let us enjoy amen if you're riding in your truck or you're riding in your car maybe you can't see the visuals amen we pray amen it still will bless your soul god bless you
Amen. Are you leaning this morning? Amen. Are you leaning on that everlasting arm? I tell you, that song was a blessing to me this morning. Amen. We got a, a little bit. Amen. Announcement. As I said, I just told you a few things about what Upon This Rock ministry will be doing. Amen. Uh, with the Skype. And so we just looking uh, for God to bless us as we take it to the next level. Today, we have something special going on. We begin a new series. Amen. Thank God we've been through the Revelation. We've been through the seven parables of Jesus series. Amen. We went through the Tabernacle series. And we're going to start a new one this morning. Amen. The seven mysteries of Jesus Christ. The seven mysteries of Jesus Christ. And we pray that, amen, it will be a blessing. Because we're going to deal with some things, amen, amen, things of this day, even a few social issues. So um, let us uh, pray, you know, that God will get the glory, that God will have his way. We want self to be slain, and we want Jesus to reign. Amen. So let us have one more and get ready for the word of God. Amen. The devil doesn't like it because I went to my neighbors. There are plenty of precious seeds. He is all upset because I left his dominion and talked to someone else. Oh, 
Amen. We know he don't like it, but that's all right. devil doesn't like it amen i like that song but that's all right okay as we uh get set up a little bit here amen we need to adjust our screen so you can see us and also be praying that god will have his way amen Okay, turn your Bibles, if you will, to Ephesians, the first chapter. Ephesians, the first chapter. Have you ever studied the book of Ephesians? Amen. You will find God's eternal purpose in it for the church. Amen. Concerning us. Amen. The, he, it shows us his will, his purpose, the reason why he has chosen us as a people to worship and to serve him. It's a mystery to some people. Some people don't understand it. Amen. They think it, everybody out here is a child of God. Amen. That's not so. Amen. So we need to understand these seven mysteries. Amen. And these seven mysteries, if I would list them, this is what we're going to be studying. Just to give you a short sneak preview, we're going to study the mystery of adoption, the mystery of the inheritance, the mystery of his grace. The mystery of reconciliation. The mystery of the fellowship. The mystery of Christ and his church. And the mystery of the gospel. Again, I'm going to repeat this. The mystery of adoption. The mystery of the inheritance. The mystery of his grace. The mystery of reconciliation. The mystery of of the fellowship the mystery of christ and his church and last but not least the mystery of the gospel now what is a mystery all right well the definition of a mystery in the religious realm is a religious truth that one can know only by revelation and cannot fully understand the mystery. For example, a person who can't fully understand the mystery of the Trinity is kind of using that as a, an example. But a mystery is something not understood, understood or beyond understanding. Like, for example, the mystery of his disappearance has never been solved. You ever seen many of those shows when you know, they keep you on the edge of your seat or something like that. And they, as they go, especially a crime show, and they trying to solve the mystery. Well, amen. Let us go to Deuteronomy 29, 29, if you will. And let us take a look at the mystery. Well, thank you, Lord. Listen to what the Bible says. The secret thing belong unto the Lord our God. You know, God has revealed some things just for himself. But those things which are revealed, listen to this, but those things which are revealed <clears throat> belong unto us and to our children forever that we may do all <clears throat> 
do all the words of this law. All right. So there are some things God has hidden from us. And then there are some things he wants us to know. Uh, this thought come to my mind. Let's go to Matthews, the 13th chapter. Amen. We need to understand the purpose of revealing truth. There are some things that are just for family members. I'm just speaking naturally now. And it's not for the world. You understand? There are some things that just stay among the family. There's something you want to tell your children, amen, or your husband or wife, and you only want them to know. It's not to be shared. Well, you know, God is like that also, amen. There's some things that he wants us to know. And when God, and when Jesus was teaching along the lines of the parables, amen, they had a question. Well, let me back it up. 13 and 1. Or 13 and 2. And a great multitude were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Of course, you know the, amen, the parable about how sore went to sow. All right? And when we get to the 10th verse, it says, And the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you, not them. Listen. Because it is given unto you to know what? The mysteries of the kingdom. There are certain mysteries of the kingdom. There are certain reasons why the Lord do certain things in the church, amen, that the world may not understand, amen. Those in sectism may not understand. Even those who sit under the truth of God's word, amen, some of them, amen, from the start, don't understand. And he goes on, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them, listen to this, it is not given. All right? For whatsoever or whosoever, I should say. For whosoever hath to him shall be given. Amen. If you are one, amen, who heart is open to truth, amen, God is able, amen, to reveal things unto you, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever have not, from him shall be taken away even that he has. See, there are some people, they think they understand certain things. Amen. Uh, and uh, they teach God's word from, in a literal sense, amen. Some things are literal, don't get me wrong. But there are some things that are spiritual. There are some things that are taught, amen, in figures, in types, amen. God shows us shadows. Amen. He has a way of revealing his truth to us. All right? But there are some things. The Bible said a scribe well instructed unto the kingdom will go into his treasure and bring out things new and, uh, and old. So here it is as we, we're not here to solve the mysteries. Amen. Because they've already been solved. Amen. But we're here to learn about the mystery. God want to reveal to us some mysteries out of his word. Well, to understand these mysteries, I need to, amen, be in a condition or my heart needs to be in a place, amen, that it can receive these mysteries. Now listen to this again in the 13th chapter. Uh, here we go. Um, 13 verse, therefore speak I to them in parables because they seeing, see some people think they understand, they could see, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says by hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, 
and seeing, you shall see and shall not perceive. And this people heart is wax gross. Listen. And their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they shall see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their hearts. Come on. Schools make doctors, lawyers, and teachers, but it take God to make a preacher. Amen. And for that preacher to reveal the mysteries of God, he got to live with God. He has to talk with God. Amen. He has to be like God in the sense of being holy. He began to tell the disciple, and he encouraged him. And I encourage you this morning. Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them. When you sit under the message of truth, and you're living a righteous life. And God began to open up the understanding of his word to you. Look, let me tell you something. There are some people that have been in the seminary for years. There, and they still don't understand what you understand. Look at Nicodemus. He came to Jesus by night. All right. And he said, I know you're a great teacher that come from God. See, you got to be careful with some people. They are flatter you, give you all kinds of flattery. Oh, I know God is using you, but amen. You take and you preach that word against them. Let me tell you something. Boy, they'll look at you as if they got 40 daggers in their eyes waiting, amen, to kill uh, uh, um, kill the word, amen. And they don't want to hear that. But what about you said, now I was a man of God, you said that you know I teach truth, but when the truth now is against you, amen, you got a different spirit about it. Sometimes these mysteries get you in trouble. Amen. But listen to this. He said, verily, verily, I say to you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them. And to hear the things, amen, which you hear, and have not heard them. So just sitting under the gospel, that's not guaranteed that you're going to understand what is being said. He said earlier in the same passage, hear with your heart. You know, in studying sometimes, um, and I'm trying to understand, especially if you're dealing with... Uh, uh, types and shadows and, and metaphors and things of that nature and parables, uh, analogies. Uh, and I, I, you know, I, I know I'm on the surface because I know and, and I feel, now, Lord, there's got to be a deeper meaning behind this. So what I do, I say, Lord, I don't understand with my ears, but Lord, if this is you speaking to me, Please help my heart to understand it. The Bible said, With the heart man believeth unto, the, unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. See, this is a heart thing. Amen. It ain't how much you know. Amen. It is when your heart has been changed. Amen. When you have been changed. And your heart is changed. God is able, amen, to reason with you, converse with you, open up your understanding. Look, I'll just read this scripture here just to show you. It's in Romans, amen, 6, 17, if you will. Well, thank you, Lord. Listen to this. But God be thanks that you were servants of sin. See, you got religious sinners going to church every day thinking they understand, amen, what the Lord is saying. Well, if they understand uh, what he's saying, how come they don't understand? And she shall bring forth a son. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. And he shall, what, save his people from their sinning. 
from their sins. Amen. If you understand, why is it so hard for you, amen, to understand that you, Jesus, died for our sin. He delivered us from our sin. He saved us from our sin. So why are you still sinning? You say you're a Christian. You say you're following him. Amen. So that's what it means. See, they see with their eyes, but they don't understand with their hearts. This is a hard thing, folks. But God be thanks that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was being delivered you, which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, you became servants of righteousness. Listen, it is what it is truth that set us free. Jesus said, and you shall know the truth. That is, you should know the mystery. Guess what? And it set you free. When God showed us the mystery, uh, or showed us mystery, Babylon the Great, and we saw that truth, amen, we ran for our lives. We escaped. See what I'm saying? Amen. It set us free. When God showed us our sins and the bondage that it had held us in, amen, he that the Son set free is free indeed. So we believed it with our hearts. We took the word in with our hearts. And guess what? He set us free. We ran for our lives. So it is God's will that we understand some of these mysteries. All right? So I hope we have laid that foundation down so you can understand what God wants us to say, uh, uh, what he has for us in Ephesians. Now, I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people, they ooh, love your teaching on Revelation or the seven parable, but all of the word of God is good. Amen. God got some nuggets for us. Amen. Just like he did in the book of Revelation. Amen. Look, let me tell you, when you get it, when you get the gospel as the Spirit give it to you, amen, it's like the power of, the, of his word on steroids. Amen. Just open your heart that you can receive the word of God. The Bible said he sent forth his word and he healed the people. Amen. So, amen, the word of God, it has a purpose. Listen to this here. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I'm reading out Ephesians. I started at the first chapter in the first verse. Look, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Well, what is the heavenly places? Amen. The heavenly places is the church, the spiritual realm where God's people dwell. The Bible says, and you have he quickened who were dead and trespassed trespasses and sin and he raised us up and made us to sit together in heavenly places the kingdom is in a heavenly place that's why he used the term the kingdom of heaven amen it ain't talking about some far off place amen uh, a, a la la land of never or never land amen but this place is the state or the condition, amen, that God uh, uh, has put us in as saints of God. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. He has chosen us in him. Isn't that amazing? That's a blessing in itself. Now, chosen, amen. Well, first of all, we wasn't with him, amen. He chose us. Listen, 
This is the mystery that I'm tackling first. Mystery number one. Amen. The mystery of adoption, or you can put it like this, the revelation of adoption. Amen. We are blessed with all spiritual blessings. Amen. What is the benefit of being adopted? What is the benefit of being chosen? Let us read a little more. I want to lay down the context. Amen. And then we will elaborate with thoughts. Four verse. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace. Amen wherein he has made us accepted. I like that. Have made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he has abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he have purpose in himself. See, God has an eternal purpose. Things just don't happen. Amen. Uh, you and I didn't get saved by circumstance. Amen. God had you in mind a long time ago. That is, in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one. I like that. All things in Christ, both which are in heaven, amen, and which are on earth, even in him. All right? I want you to know, saints of God, we are blessed people. We are blessed with all spiritual blessing. That is the benefit of being adopted. I don't know, maybe some of you out there has been adopted. Amen. Being adopted is not a bad thing. <clears throat> My wife and I, uh, we've had adopted children. Amen. There are some who appreciate it, and then there are some who don't appreciate it. But you can tell the difference. Amen. It's nothing like, amen, you're down, you're out, you're lonely, you're without parents, and all of a sudden, Somebody chooses you. Amen. The scripture said that we were chosen. See, that's one of the benefits. And being adopted, when you adopt a child, that child has all the same rights as your birth child, the one you have given birth to. We are blessed with all spiritual blessing. These are the benefits of being adopted in Christ. Amen. Amen. See, the Jews... The Bible said they were God's chosen people. But when they, amen, rejected the Messiah, God turned to the Gentiles. And when he turned to the Gentile, he made them the beneficiary of all the benefits that he was trying to bestow on the Jews. Amen. And here it is. He raised them up to a heavenly place. Amen. Even though the Jews, the literal Jews was on earth, God brought heaven down to them. Yes, he did. He descended in the cloud. Amen. Of glory. Amen. He was a, a cloud. Amen. In the daytime and a pillar of fire by night. He brought heaven to them. Amen. But we who were lost. Amen. Void. Without God in the world. Amen. He lifted us up. We needed some help. Amen. I don't know about you, but I could not deliver myself. Because if we could deliver ourselves, there would have been no need of Jesus coming. But we needed help. And he condescended. Hallelujah. He came down. The Lord's arm is not short that it couldn't say. Neither was his uh, ear heavy that he couldn't hear. He heard our prayers. He heard our cry. And he delivered us. And brought us up to a heavenly place. Well, what does 
adoption mean? Okay, well, the word adoption means to take by choice into a relationship, especially to take voluntarily. You're not forced, amen, but this is something you decided to do, to take voluntarily a child, amen, of other parents as one own child. And guess what? You bestow on him the same benefits, amen, that you will give your natural born child. Amen. In most cases, why are people adopted? Why are they chosen? Look, we are chosen, we were chosen before the foundation of the world. Well, there's many reasons why people are uh, adopted. They couldn't have children. Amen. With God, that wasn't the case. God didn't need us. Amen. But he wanted us. It was his desire. It was his will. Come on. Because Jesus told the Jews he don't necessarily need y'all. He can take some rocks and make some children uh, out of uh, for Abraham. But listen to this. We were chosen before the foundation of the world that we should be holy. Ephesians 1 and 4 said, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation. Amen. Before uh, the creation of day one. Before the spirit of the living God moved on the face of the uh, uh, water. Before the words that were uttered, let there be light. Amen. Before any of that, we were chosen. It's just like this building. This building was built before it was put on this location. How was it? It was in the mind of the architecture. And what he had in his mind, he put it down on paper. Amen. He created a will. This is what he, was, he wanted to do. And then he had a people. Amen. Amen. The ar architect, he went and got tradesmen, craftsmen, and they built it and put it together. See, we were chosen before the foundation of the world. Amen. You, amen, who were sick, you was chosen before the foundation of the world. You who are suffering, you was chosen before the foundation of the world. Let me tell you, he had your name written down. You, amen, was on his mind. I think of that song, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. We were chosen already before the foundation of the world that we should be holy. God wanted a holy people unto himself. God decided to go into the adoption business. He tried it with the nation of Israel. Amen. But let me tell you something. They fought him. They rejected him. They didn't appreciate his blessings. Now there are some children who have been adopted. <clears throat> and they understand. They know what it is to have somebody to love them. But then there are some people, amen, that are so messed up. I don't care what you do for them. You can go over and beyond the call of duty, amen. They still won't appreciate it. Some people have to learn things the tough way. But God decided to go into the adoption business. Listen to this. I like that part where he said, he made us accepted in the beloved. Well, what is his beloved? Amen. He said, my dove, my undefiled is but one. She's only one of her mother. Amen. The church is his beloved. Come on. See, he have always has two eternal purposes. And that is that he would have a home to dwell in the midst of his people. And also that he would have a bride for his son. So you know what he did? He went into the adoption business. Amen. He saw a people. Amen. Or part of the creation which he had created. Amen. They were only children in the sense of by created by creation, but they were far, amen, from the mark. They were far from the covenant, amen. They was not his people. They didn't have a name. But he took those people 
and made them the apple of his eye. Come on. You and I, we're the apple of his eye. He made us accepted in the beloved. And guess what? After we became accepted, amen, he began to show us the mystery of his will. In other words, the will was his written plan, amen, laid out before us that if we would accept this agreement, I want you as my son, amen, I want you, I want to be a father unto you and I want you to be a child unto me. And for as many as receive them, amen, one of the first benefit is he gave them power to become the sons of God. Now, you've heard that term many times throughout the scripture, sons of God. It's a lot to that. <clears throat> the sons of God was before the Lord in Job's day. You can go all the way back, amen, that and when Seth was born, the Bible said they began to call upon God again. Amen. These sons, these people hey, will, will get together, consecrate, and set aside their life to do one thing, to worship God. So how was he going to do this? He revealed to them the mystery of his will, the plan of his salvation, and that those Jews that had, who did believe, and we Gentiles who didn't know God, far from the commonwealth, didn't have any of the benefits, amen, even though the Jews had a jump on them because, amen, he had dwelt among them. He said, I'm going to take them, I'm going to chose them, and I am going to make them fit in one body or one family. Isn't that amazing? That is the mystery of adoption. How we are able to fit together in one body. Well, it's the same thing. You got to take adopted children and you got to take your own and you got to make it work. You got to make it fit. You got to make it fit as a family. And that's just what God did for us. So I want y'all to hang in here. Amen. Because, amen, the next thing we will be studying, amen, is the mystery of the inheritance. Amen. The mystery of the inheritance. May God bless you. Bless his word. Amen. May it follow you throughout the day and be encouraged. Lift up your head, O ye gate. Lift them up, ye everlasting door. For the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king? The Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Amen. Well, glory.